uh, we're Vicon, we make motion capture systems. And at this event in 2023, we unveiled for the first time the work we've been doing in Markerless. And this was specifically in a VR application. So we had six people enter an experience and were being uh, tracked in real time completely without markers or suits. And ever since then, the question we've had every single time is, Vicon, when is Markerless going to arrive in entertainment? What are you doing with Markerless that's going to benefit films and games? And this is a challenging question because realistically, what we want isn't important. What's important are the users. What challenges are they coming under? What do they need to overcome? What do they want to do with motion capture tomorrow that they can't currently do today? So we started conversations with multiple customers. We gave them the hardware, we gave them the software, and we asked them, where do you see this fitting in your pipeline? What challenges can you overcome? And the overwhelming response we got was, we just want more motion capture, but we want fewer barriers to doing it. We want our animation team to be able to walk into a space, capture data, take that back to their desk, work on it, and then have something that they can prototype with, that they can build cinematics out of. And so the entire mentality that we have brought to our Markless product is one of adoption, of broadening adoption, taking motion capture to even more places than we had before. And to demonstrate this, we're going to give you an example of what this looks like in context of where a user just wants to capture some animation quickly that they can then use in a prototyping context. I'm very pleased to present Jessa, our performer for the day. And in this context, Jessa is representing an animator. She has a project. She's been asked to produce some rough animations, but she doesn't necessarily want to do all these by hand. She doesn't want a keyframe. She just wants to get some really quick concepts together. She's not a motion capture user necessarily. She doesn't want to interact with suits. She doesn't want to interact with markers. She just wants to capture data that she can use in her workflow. She types in her name into the subject and then comes over and clicks create next to that. Now the system is looking for, for the next performer that will then generate a skeleton around. But before she does this, she's working on her own. She doesn't have a support team, she doesn't have a mocap TD with her. Therefore she wants to start capturing data without having to worry about asking someone to start the process. She can now walk into the volume, strike a T-pose, and within just a couple of clicks, we have a T-pose. Now where this is really useful, is because we haven't had to worry about putting on a suit or markers, our animator can just start worrying about the performance. She can go straight into what she wants to capture and she can start iterating. You may have guessed from this very subtle motion that she's swinging a bat. But because we haven't had to mark up the suit, we haven't had to spend too much time calibrating, she just needs to worry about the performance and not having to modulate the performance to what she's wearing. She comes back to the system and hits stop capture. And now she wants to review that data to see what she can change, what can she enhance. We come to the review panel and open baseball swing. If we come to the controls at the bottom of the viewport, she can hit play. Now this is instant playback. So this data hasn't gone into the cloud, it hasn't gone through any reprocessing or any cleanup. This is the exact capture that she just completed in real time. She can interact with the viewport to then re review that capture from different angles to see what do I want to work on? What, what was good about this? What was weak about this? What do I want to enhance? Now, one of the things that many uh, mocap specialists and animators will tell you is one of the most difficult things to simulate is weight, is inertia. And now she can come in and start capturing data once again, but with the, the benefit that a prop provides. No longer is she thinking, how do I make this look realistic? How do I make it look convincing? She can just focus on the performance. And because all this is done in the same system, all that data is going to be saved into one single file. Now she's pretty happy with this. She's captured data. She's pretty happy with the performance, but she wants to improve the data quality so it's ready for the next part of the pipeline. So what she's going to do is go to Windows Explorer and bring up her file directory, which has these captures in. So we have an MCP file. An MCP file is all the data that was just captured. We're going to take that into our post solution. So we drop that into the viewport. Anyone who's worked with Viacom before, this will be familiar to you. This is the exact same post editing software that we've provided in optical motion capture since 2017 when Shogun Live launched. And you can see this is the exact same data, but there are some flaws. There is some jitter, there are some imperfections that we want to work on as quickly as possible. But we don't want to do that to the entire tape. We just want to enhance the parts that are relevant to our animator's needs. So the first thing we're gonna do is find the start of the sequence that she wants to use. So we add that to the animation start and that's gonna crop the beginning of this take. We're gonna find the end of the sequence that we want to use. 
So the next stage is to take this data and just very quickly improve it. The way we're going to do this is coming to the Markless MoCap processing panel and hitting reprocess. So the data we've seen so far is captured at quarter HD, 60 frames per second, but it's saved to the machine at 1080p, 120 frames per second. So there we have it. Now we have doubled the frame rate. We've got some slightly smoother data, but we also, we are seeing artifacts. We're seeing shortcomings in this data. She doesn't want to spend ages cleaning this up. She's not a mocap specialist. She's an animator. She just wants something that's better for her, for her needs. Now we're going to hit the very, very complicated clean up button. And what this is going to do is run through the start to end of that take and very intuitively remove jitter. It's going to fill in uh, missing frames. It's going to correct the overall jitter level. So what we're going to get is something way smoother. And now what we have is a file that 120 frames per second, we've removed those drops. The jitter has been reduced, but what's more important is that cleanup has not come at the expense of the reality of the performance. One of the things that we're always careful to do is make sure that anything we do to improve the data doesn't compromise the raw performance that's been put there in the first place. But where this is really important from Jess's perspective, and this, she's, been, she's walked into a volume, she's set up a capture, she's captured data, she's added a prop to that data, she's reprocessed and cleaned that data in the space of three or four minutes. From an animator's perspective, she can now save this, export it as an FBX, take it to Unity or Unreal, whatever she needs to do, she now has a file that she can work with. Because this is all built on pre-existing Viacom pipelines and software, we can take all this data from Markless and feed it straight into a game engine. So if I could please ask Zach to come into the volume. So now we have two performers and they can start interacting. Now as useful as this is from a data recording perspective, what we don't necessarily have from this is a visualization of the end scene. I don't just want to see two humans interacting. I want to see a giant turtle monster get the living life kicked out of it by a robot with a rocket launcher for an arm. Because that's what we all fantasize about seeing at the end of the day. So the next thing we're going to do is bring up a pair of retargets that we've already created um, previously. And we're going to apply these skins to our performers. This is a process that we don't need to go to Motion Builder or Unreal to do. We have the tools within Side Shogun, meaning we can very quickly set up retargets and get a sense of what these characters are going to look like in context. Jessa is now a monster. Now you might notice some very subtle differences between the character and the performer. Jessa does not have a tail. Jessa does not have a shell, nor does Jessa have a beak. Zack, on the other hand, does not have a rocket launcher instead of his hand. But because of how this has been set up with all of our tools, we don't need to worry about data impacting these performances or these characters in ways we don't expect. We have maximum control of how, of how the performer's data translates over to that of our characters. And you can immediately see from a creative's perspective or a director's perspective, no longer do I need to imagine what this motion will look like when applied to our characters. I can see it in front of me. Now this is useful. From a performer's perspective, it means that they can look at their characters and get a sense of how do I want to modulate my performance to meet that. But it doesn't necessarily give us everything that we want to see. What we also want to see is lighting. We want to see texture. What does this performance look like in the intended context? All of these retargets have then been taken from Shogun into Unreal Engine 5. We've set up an environment very quickly, and now we can ask our performers to start tearing each other apart like a turtle monster and robot only could. Now what's really useful from a performer's perspective is no longer do they have to wait till the end of the day to see what their performance looks like on this data. They can see it in real time. They can have conversations with the artists, with the directors. How can I bring this performance to life? They're not worrying about technology. They're not worrying about anything other than the best performance possible. If I could please get a final rupturous round of applause for what was the best Leviathan fight we've ever seen. If we have any further questions, please come and speak to myself, our incredible support team or our sales team. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about Marvelous Motion Capture. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy SIGGRAPH. Thank you, everyone.